Manholes are underground inspection chambers that provide access to underground utilities like a sewer system. Manholes enables operations and the utility personnel to access points to undertake operations like inspection, modification, cleaning and maintenance. This is an example layout of a sewer and stormwater collection system provided by the NSW government. The layout shows the ruptures and cracks that is observed in a sewer system as well as a stormwater system. But here I'm using this layout to explain to you the general layout of manhole in a sewer system or in a stormwater system. As shown, there is a crack observed in the sewer pipe, which can be assessed through the manhole. So the main purpose of a manhole is to provide access to these sewer lines that is being constructed underground. Initially, manholes were built to provide humans with access to pipes and other underground assets. Now, its modern use is to employ equipment like inspection cameras in the manhole to gather CCTV footages so that the cleaning and maintenance can be done without the use of any personal entry. The main functions of a manhole is to provide access for inspecting sewers or stormwater systems to clean and maintain sewer or stormwater line, to assist in ventilating the sewage system by allowing gases to escape, to facilitate joining sewer or stormwater systems, change in direction, change in alignment of the sewer or stormwater, and also to ensure that the sewer or the stormwater line is laid at convenient heights. There are different types of manholes that are used for a stormwater or a sewer system. The manhole type varies based on the depth with which it is installed or the material that is used to construct a manhole. In general, the major parts of manhole are explained one by one in this video. Number one, cover of a manhole. The cover of a manhole provides and controls the access from the ground surface into the manhole. Manhole covers can be either made of metal, cast iron, which are very commonly used material, or less commonly used materials are precast concrete, glass reinforced plastics, or composite materials. Number two is frame of a manhole. The frame supports a manhole cover and forms the enclosing cover of the manhole. It forms the major part of the manhole. It is either made of brick, precast concrete, plastic, or fiberglass. Number three is chimney of a manhole. Chimney is the component that connects the frame to the underlying cone of a manhole. It is made of brick, concrete, or polymer material. Number four is cone of a manhole. Cone of a manhole is a tapered transition section of the manhole, as shown, which is installed between the smaller diameter of the chimney and the larger diameter of the wall for a certain depth of the manhole. Number five, the wall of a manhole. This is the vertical section of the manhole from the cone to the bottom of the manhole. Number six, manhole step. These are ladders provided on the inside of the manhole to allow easy access. A step ladder is necessary if the manhole is less than one meter. If the manhole depth exceeds 2.5 meter, then a regular ladder is fitted. Modern manholes are nowadays designed to avoid the need for physical entry. Number seven is channel of a manhole. A channel is a conduit that is located at the bottom of the manhole to let the water or the sewage pass through the manhole inlet to the outlet. It is more clearly explained in this figure. Along with channel comes the bench of a manhole. A manhole bench is the bottom section of the manhole made of mortar or brick. It is poured between the walls of the manhole and the sewer pipes. The main purpose of benching in the manhole is to direct flow back to the channel during any block issues. It is also used by the maintenance personnel to stand on the bottom during the service speed periods. It should be noted that the benching should be self-cleansing and formed with high strength concrete at a gradient of between 110 to 130. In order to maintain a smooth flow within the main channel, the benching must be formed vertically from the edge of the channel to at least the crown of the pipe. Number nine is the inward or bottom of a manhole. The lowest point of the channel inside the manhole forms the inward. Its characteristics govern the function or flow line or the pipe. Inward elevation is the distance between the sewer pipe and given benchmark. The benchmark is mostly the top of the street or the road. 
So in what elevation is measured before installing a sewer pipe? Number 10 is drop inlet. These pipe drop inlets are special pipe systems that connect to the incoming pipe and turn 90 degrees to the bottom of the manhole, then turn horizontally into the manhole. All these frames, the pipes, are attached to the given components by means of sealants and seals and connections that are designed based on the type of manhole that has been installed. Manholes are located generally at a point where there is a change in direction or change in gradient of the utilities. Or it is installed in areas where there is access for specific maintenance purpose. You can check the link in the description below to know about the location and spacing of manhole constructed as per the New York Department of Environmental Protection. Hope this video was informative. For more informative construction videos, please subscribe to Civil Engineering Fanatics.